going to be in England. That's exciting. What are you doing in England? I didn't hear if you said I'm it on the air. Doing stuff. 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 Okay. In England. Sounds fun. In the winter. I like stuff. <laughs> I'm doing yeah. you, you, it's stuff. It's all you need to know right now. Stuff. Okay. You're not like assassinating the queen or anything, are you? Oh, no. They, they frown on that there. They do, but yeah. Doing and do not kidnap the royal baby. <laughs> they frown oh, on that. yeah, they have one of those, don't they? And they're pretty protective of it. Mm. And they're asking me, is Diamanda crossing over? They kind of don't understand that there's a, a difference between England and Ireland. There's a big difference. And there's a war between them. Like depending on where you are, England is not, I mean, it's a small country compared to us, but hmm. Northern Ireland, like England stretches all the way down. Depending on where you are in England, you're hours and hours away. There's you know. water in between. A lot of water. And there is water in between. But I think it's only like maybe an hour ride by ferry. It's a pretty short distance of water. It's the land distance. Hmm. Like, if you're in London, you're pretty damn far away. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be in London, but I'm going to be in England. I'm out but of my England, damn mind. Like, though technically Northern Ireland is still ruled by England, that doesn't make it England. It's, it's a different landmass. <laughs> Geography, learn a shit. <laughs> All right. Um, Ireland is the one that looks like a leprechaun's head. Never you never noticed that? I never thought of it that way. Ireland is shaped like a, a leprechaun's profile. He's got a beard and a pointy nose and a little hat. I'll have to go look. So are we ready to take on the nonsense this week? Let's take on the nonsense. All Let's right. be thankful for the nonsense because it's Thanksgiving. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, you know, in this era of Web 2.0 and everybody trying to find the next business idea, there have been some kind of outlandish ideas bandied around. And venture capital is one of those things where you'll find some rich idiot who will be like, I'm doing stuff on the internet. And they'll like throw money at him. Oh, give me, oh, you do it here. Have my money and give me back more money later. Okay. I need some rich idiot to do that. They, that happens a lot, but there's a new idea that has come out and this comes from the guy who, um, let's see what he, uh, his previous projects. Let me see. Um, what is, I, I had it down here. I'm making, I'm, you know, making, well, he's done other stuff on the internet that's made him money. Beats for real. That was his previous project. Um, and it made him money. So here is his new project. And I don't think he's, this is one of those, um, I don't think you thought this one all the way through, bucko. It's called Love Room. And um, it will allow. Well, it will allow screwed up shot on the air. Whoops. Um, I fix. There we go. I fix. Hee <laughs> hee. Live, everybody. Love room. It's going to match attractive people with free rooms to stay in. What? What happens is. If you have a room that you would like to allow someone to stay in, you can offer it to attractive people to stay in for that night on the basis of that they are attractive and that's all. And there's nothing else involved. And what could possibly go wrong? So you're using your looks as rent? Yes, that's the idea. You are going to, because you are an attractive person, stay in a complete stranger's house who is letting you stay there 
just based on the fact that you're attractive and not expecting any other things in return for letting you stay there. What could possibly go wrong with this plan? I feel like there's going to be a lot of cameras in these rooms. Oh, that's that's the gentlest what could possibly go wrong. I, I it's, it's love room hit headlines when it was a mere twinkle in uh, Borsiangra's eye. This comes from Josh, Josh. Bocanegra. Boca, Bocanegra. There we go. Josh Bocanegra. It means Boca. Doesn't that, it means black mouth. Josh Blackmouth. Um, presented as a, a way for attractive people to get free rooms for the night. The Airbnb for anyone looking for a good time. It began as a launching soon page featuring a sultry looking female lying on a bed with a come hither stare. As evidenced there. Um... Bocanegra speaking to Wired sounds generally curious about how the 2000 people who have already registered already will use the service, which initially seemed geared toward an apparent under, underserved one night stand marketplace. But surprisingly, or most tellingly, considering the fact the concept is received in, in the media, Bocanegra doesn't think anyone in their right mind will actually use it for that purpose. Has he ever been on the Internet? Like, question one of everything on the internet is, how can I fuck it? <laughs> Google, how can I fuck it? <laughs> Don't try to put your dick in the Google doodle. No, I just, yeah, you, you look at that. I don't understand the point. Yeah, they asked him exactly how he expects. Like, I don't understand to use the mission statement. He says, I'm not sure how most people would use the service yet, but currently you can search for others who are just looking for friends or serious relationship or casual or just, you know. Like, I have a room. I could rent that room for money or I could give it to you for free because you're hot. And who determines who's attractive enough to get a free room? Yeah, I know, right? You know, you. Like, on what scale are we judging? I find this very confusing. I just, this is one of those lack of foresight. This could go horribly, horribly wrong. This will almost certainly go horribly wrong. This is an episode of, of Law and Order Special Victims Unit just waiting to happen. Oh, the lawsuits. Oh, the I mean, many. I almost feel like this. I almost want to believe this is just viral marketing for the new season of SVU. <laughs> Seriously. Like this is one of those ARGs that they, you know, that Lost used to do a lot with like you sign up for this. And then when you show up for the room, you meet Mariska Hardigay or something. <laughs> Just I uh, is it just that it could go so I just I just really don't get the mission statement. <laughs> how do you make money? That's the other thing. How is where's the you it's know, how like, is this a business model? It's like step one, hot people. Step two, step three, profit. Like I don't. I don't understand the business model here, and I don't think it's sustainable. No, because eventually you're going to run out of hot people who are willing to be assaulted. Well, I don't know about that. Well, we have much more normal fare for us with the next story. Um, everyone here remembers when I told the story about how I got very, very drunk and at a convention and while laying on a backbench... In the middle of the night, staring up at the night sky, I happily proclaimed to all and sundry that I was, in fact, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this guy, you know what? I, I he aimed a little lower in his claims. Um, this is from Boston. Man, I saw this. man claiming to be Rumpelstiltskin arrested at Davis Square Station. A man claiming to be the storybook character Rumpelstiltskin was arrested today after he was found drinking and shouting profanities at other patrons. I was really hoping it would turn out to be Robert Carlyle. 
because then they'd have to be like, well, well played. <laughs> I mean, you're still drunk and disorderly, but OK, I just, you know, he 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 I. I can't say I haven't understood, but why Rumpelstiltskin? That's my question. Yeah, like of all the characters, why that one? Why all the, you know, don't make me, I would, you cut your finger on a fucking spittle, bitch. I will and, do this shit to you. And did the cops ask him to prove it by spinning hay into gold? I will spin. Oh, it's hay, hay straw. I will, I will spin your fucking straw, motherfucker. You watch. Spin Is that, that shit. His bail? I know. It's. I'm just. I don't understand how. I know how you get drunk and do this shit. I just don't know why he fixed on that one. And what was he well, yelling at people? Well, it's Boston, so there's a good bet that there was either a Sox or Pats game involved. But how did we get to Rumpelstiltskin? That's that's my. Did he get just someone mentioned he's a drunk hipster and doing it ironically? I don't know. Maybe he was going for the I'm Rumpelstiltskin. You haven't heard of me. And isn't the whole thing outside of the television show with Rumpelstiltskin that knowing his name gives you power over him? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, remember that? You know, it'd be like you have to guess my name. Well, now they don't, dumbass. I mean, I guess they did have power over since they arrested him. Great. So I guess it worked. Yeah, well, he should, probably maybe, shouldn't have said his name. Maybe it's true. And he had magical powers until he got drunk and told everybody his name. <laughs> you know, you I say that he, and, and you're joking, but, but you look like you totally believe it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. But I saw this headline earlier and I was really hoping it would turn out to be Robert Carlyle. That would have made my whole day drunken Robert Carlyle running around. I'm Rumpelstiltskin, dearie. Good times. Good times. Well, we've, we've got another incident with the butt dial. The butt dial is, you know what? The butt dial is a better crime fighter than Batman at this point. You know, I realize the shit happening to people. It's still happening. <laughs> but it's you know it we ha keep having these incidents where people's phones and the, the, people's asses are fighting crime at an alarming rate. There's going to be like a super friends of people's butts eventually fighting crime. That sounds like a Skinamax <sighs> action series. The Just Ass League of America. Oh damn it! <laughs> Boss accused of plotting former employees murder. This is uh This isn't this, I thought it was Florida. It's not Florida. I'm amazed. Um Jonesboro man has been charged with conspiracy to commit murder after police say the intended victim overheard the suspect planning the crime. Police arrested Larry Barnett on Thursday after being contacted by a Paragold man. Man told Detective Jason Simpkins he received a call that said Barrett had unknown that uh, appeared un Barrett had unknowingly made. And his victim said he overheard Barnett give uh, another man directions to his home. He said, I don't care if you have to burn his house to the ground with him in it. I don't care what you have to do. Make it look like an accident. That is this is probably one of those those moments of synchronicity. That happened at the worst possible moment for this poor guy. And I call him this poor guy, but he looks like a dick. I I don't I know I'm judging by appearances, but just look at this guy. He's just like, yeah, and fuck you. How much do you have to hate somebody like a former employee? So you don't even have to work with this person anymore. And you still want like I've had some coworkers that I don't like. Some. But. <laughs> Like, once they're gone, there's really no need to kill them anymore. Like, sure, I've plotted the demise of some coworkers while I was working with them because it would have improved my work day. But once they're gone, what's the point? Oh, it gets worse. Paragold police, police went to the uh, complainant's home, found it had burglarized and the gas stove had been tampered with. Huh. 
So once you butt dialed and gave away your arson plan, you went ahead with the arson plan. <laughs> Maybe go with the different, make it look like an accident then. Again, you're right. How does this butt dialing shit keep happening? I know, like phones lock now. It's not that hard. Yeah, even with mine and locked, if I unlock, even if it's not unlocked, the only thing it'll let me dial is an emergency number. Right. Which I and guess like, that could they be. Don't have, but most phones don't have actual buttons you can press anymore. Nope. They flip out to reveal a keyboard. So I don't understand how this keeps happening to people. It's got to be. I'm. People's butts are I, maybe the butt is the seat of conscience. And it's it's trying to, to you know do the right thing. So when you say someone's head is up their ass, you're paying them a compliment. Maybe. Maybe it, just this guy's ass was more, you know. It's trying to. to oh, God, I got to save this guy. Maybe the ass is the home of the soul. The battle for the soul will be fought in the ass. Well, um, you guys get bad weather in the winter all the time. You guys get seriously. We're supposed heavy. to have a nor'easter coming just in time for Thanksgiving. Yeah, you get those seriously heavy snowfalls. And when that happens, have you have, your, have the folks around there adapted to driving in the bad weather? God, no. OK. Connecticutions. Like magic water, like rain scares the crap out of these people. I don't understand it. Like magic water falls from sky. We've got to slam on the brakes and drive 20 miles an hour in the left lane of the highway. I don't understand what's wrong with these people. It's like they've never seen weather before. And I'm like, you know what? You live in New England. Fucking adapt. Well, you speak, said never seen weather before. I guess that does kind of actually apply to these people. Hundreds of crashes as Las Vegas gets rain. Does it not rain in Las Vegas? It's the desert. Authorities in Las Vegas have responded to a to hundreds of car accidents after a storm system dropped an inch of rain over southern not not 10 inches. Not five. One inch of rain. Nixon said most of the crashes have involved just one car. Many are due to hydroplaning, which is when a driver loses steering and brake control because a layer of water between the tires and the road. Some motorists use the bone dry used to bone dry roads, for yet they need to change their driving habits when a storm rolls in. He yeah. said most of them were caused by hydroplaning. What about the ones that weren't? Because we're talking hundreds here. You know what? I can see this in a place in, the, in like the desert, though, when they're not used to driving in the rain here. Like I drive 40 minutes to work and I drive on a highway that's basically like. The northeast equivalent of the fucking Wild West, like I, it's like the fucking Autobahn. There's no rules. Maybe once a month, there's a couple of state troopers pulling people over. It's either like crack down and there's a state trooper every three feet pulling people over or it's the fucking Wild West and there's no law and it's covered in potholes. And everybody like I drive a Buick yacht and I do 90 on this highway. In my 2002 Buick fucking tank, like this highway is no man's land, but weather happens Every five feet, there's a fucking accident. These people just cannot fucking hang. But I, I kind of assume it's it's more than an inch. No, I'm telling you, Connecticut, it drizzles and these bitches panic. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. And I mean, granted, I learned to drive on Long Island where it's, you know, there's no such thing as defensive driving because the best defense is a good offense always. But like, well, no, now you actually have seen something like it because I'm showing you something like it. But that's like, but there's an excuse out there here. There's no fucking excuse. It rains all the time. It snows all the time. <laughs> and everyone's always totally unprepared as though they don't live in New England. I'm just 
Well, we can't stay here. This is rain country. Pretty much. Yeah. An inch. One. Singular. Yeah, but I mean, it's the desert. Like, we would all, like, up here, if there was a sandstorm, we'd be fucked. <laughs> but for them, that's probably, like, Tuesday. <laughs> So, um, speaking of horrible, horrible weather, um, a uh, little while back, not long ago, a few weeks, I think, a uh, tremendous goddamn typhoon hit the Philippines, and it caused all sorts of issues, like thousands of people without their homes and such, and lots of people around the world have been, you know, off making offerings to help victims and flood and it, the, the whole region was messed up and this guy from Thailand his heart was in the right place I've got to say his heart was definitely in the right place brain not in the right place Thai man arrested for allegedly attempting to donate methamphetamine to flood victims well you know their drugs are probably destroyed too 39-year-old man Jakrit Muk Mukpradab, I think I said that right, showed up with 11 methamphetamine pills in a small plastic Ziploc bag at a donation tent. He said Mr. Drakit uh, told volunteers um, they could sell the drugs and use the money to support troubled families. That's kind of sweet. <laughs> I mean, Walter White would never do that. Looking high, he showed the volunteers the drugs and told them, I don't have any money. Will these do? It kind of reminds me of the uh, the bit from Clueless. Cher, what are you doing? I'm, I'm president of the Mount Pismo Beach Relief effort, Daddy. Do you really think they need your skis? Daddy, some of these people lost all of their worldly possessions. That That includes sports gear. That includes drugs. Daddy, some of these people lost everything. <laughs> I am the one who donates. Funny. Um, you know, I... He meant well. He meant well, but... But he, I think generally a good rule of survival is don't do your good deeds while high because they're going to get a little twisted. And And even worse, it's not like, you know... If it was like something like marijuana, which chills you out, I could even understand. Because if you lose all your shit, you might be chilling out. Yeah. But meth does not. Meth wires your ass. Although maybe you could build yourself a new house. Yeah. It would on, speed, he was trying to speed up the recovery. <laughs> <laughs> Guys let's are moving too slow. Let's build a house. Let's build a bridge. Let's clean up this rubble. <laughs> Just, you know, make your make your philanthropic decisions sober. I think yes. that's for the best for everybody. Yes. Yeah. Because, you know, when you when you make them. <laughs> that's definitely one of those. Bless your heart. You're going to jail, but bless your heart. But I mean, that's a really good guy because there's not a lot of addicts, as I understand it, that would give away their stash. This is true. Like. Hardcore addicts, they're not giving up their stash. Yeah, it's sweet, I guess. It's its not very smart, but oh. it's nice. Speaking of not very smart, um, there are things I'd love to have in my life that I just cannot afford. Especially since I've started watching Top Gear, which is probably a very bad idea because they show... Look at this amazing fucking car. I'm like, I love that car. It's 100,000 pounds. I'm like, I can't have that car. Just, I want the fucking car. Fuck you, Jeremy Clarkson. So I'm looking the only at the car I really lust over is a 57 Chevy Bel Air convertible. That's but that'd be like what? 100 grand? Maybe 50 grand or so? We In good shape and to maintain it. I mean, I can't afford it. If I ever win Powerball, I'm totally getting one. Well, this guy has a very different kind of Powerball. That that is his plan for getting the car of, of his dreams. 
And that would be one of his actual balls. Man sells testicles so he can buy Nissan 370Z. He sold a testicle for a Nissan? For a Nissan. Not even for like a Jaguar or a Porsche? If you're giving up a ball, <laughs> be a baller. Mark Per... Oh, oh. I'm just saying. Mark Parisi... A ball for a Nissan. Fuck! Mark Parisi declared on CBS's show, The Doctors, he will be donating one of his testicles to medical science for $35,000 so he can buy himself a new Nissan 370Z. Thirty-five thousand. That's it. That's that's the going rate for a ball these days. That's your testicle, dude. That's a piece of you, and it don't. You are not Wolverine. The shit don't grow back. It's why only one. Yeah, because at that point, it's like really. Because like, if you donate them both, you could get a way better car. A Nissan and no, okay. Here's. I don't think there's any body part I would give up for a Nissan. No, really, I not me either. I mean, not that it's not a respectable car company, but. Okay, time asked. He lowballed it. Like even that '57 Chevy, I'd be hard pressed to give up a pinky. Like. I don't think there's any car for which I would start lopping off body parts. Especially really useful ones in really painful places. What happened? Did he walk by the dealership and go, I would give my right nut for one of those. And some guy says, I can arrange that. We can make that happen, sir. We have all kinds of financing. (laughs) Do you pay that loan bit by bit? Like, do they just come every month and carve out a little see probably not it's a car i've had cars i i had a i had a 93 mustang for over 10 years but you know what happened in those 10 years it put miles on it and it needed maintenance well they say most cars drop in value like a couple thousand dollars the second you drive it off the lot i and and i i had to keep putting money and money and money in that i had to put a whole new transmission in that car once and that's the automatic transmission. That's not cheap. So you're you're this is a via, this is a thing that eventually will wear out and wear down. Your balls are forever. Well, not really. Those wear out too. You're not getting, but you can't go and we know how use. old this guy is because maybe it already has. Which brings me back to why not donate both and get a better car. But balls wear out, they stop working, and then they start drooping. So, you know, they're not forever, really. But if they're gone. And not only that, this is not you're not you're never picking up women like this. Because you might have the car, but you're also wow, known this as- is a nice car paid for it with my ball. Oh. That's so that's off the table, too. Really? No, I don't think a Nissan is one of those cars that that will turn heads all that much. No. And I've the, like I said, I've been watching Top Gear. I know what the good cars are. This is not one of them. You know, Aston Martins and the Ferraris and all that. This is not one of them. This is one of the yeah, ones. Like- this is, this is like one of the ones James May would think is a good car, and it's not. I, I, I just. I yeah, I don't think that's a fair trade at all. No. Because, you know, you're going, well, maybe you just don't want kids anymore. That's not how balls work, okay? If you don't want kids anymore, you just tie them off. Yeah. They like, do other things. Yeah. Well. They regulate hormones. 
The presence of those means you have testosterone, means, you know, it regulates shit. You take those, things get and a little different like, suddenly. I feel like lopping off just one is going to leave you a bit off balance. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, not being in the possession of balls, but like, I feel like that would set off your whole equilibrium, don't you think? Got Game says he's a car nut. Oh. Mm -hmm. But don't you think like you'd, you'd walk different and like your whole center of gravity down there is different now. Everything's asymmetrical. Apophisu says, I, the only part I'd sell is my nipples. Men don't need those. But those would be painful to cut off. Yeah, it's like you got to think in terms of not only are you using it, but how much will it hurt when they lop it off? Well, I think they at least give him anesthetic first. It's not like they're like, OK, Put yeah, him up here on the carving board. I think they, they're knocking him out first. You're still going to have a wound there for a while, and it's going to hurt like a uh, motherfucker. Oh, and OK, people in the channel are pointing out. So um, is if the does this is it completely paid off? Because otherwise we're talking about a repo man. Did they come for the other ball? Yeah. Well, this, uh, I think the, the, the first thing we learned this week is take out a loan, not your scrotum. That's more because you only get one set of testicles. You'll have many cars in your lifetime, but only two balls. That's all yeah. you got. Most of what is on your person. That's all you get. You only get one. You only get one shot at that. Yeah, that's they. Yeah, you don't. We get, are not starfish. It's not growing back. Um, we've learned that just because you had one good internet idea doesn't mean any idea you have is a good internet idea. Mm -mm. Especially when it could lead to some really awful sexual assault shit. Yeah, and if you think that's not going to happen, you're either naive or on some really good drugs. Because you know that Air Airbnb service, right? Where people will set up their own houses to be, you know, they'll, they'll let other people stay in their houses for yeah. money. Yeah. And then what well, happened? People did that for, the first, for Obama's first inaugural. Because all the hotels booked up. And then you know what happens? Complete random strangers come in and destroy your fucking house. Like you knew it was going to fucking happen. You like, can't really trust people. No, no, you can't. Not unless they have some reason like monetary that not unless you can punish them somehow. And yeah, we've learned that if you are going to get drunk and claim to be some sort of thing, aim high. Because this this rumple, do you have do you have like a, like an inferiority complex or something? I'm OK, maybe I'm Rumpelstiltskin at best. I, I don't know. Well, you know, That's... a good lie doesn't push too far. <laughs> he was going for the plausibility factor on that. Right, one. like he didn't claim to be Prince Charming. Rumble still skin. Why not? Maybe he had parents with a really fucked up sense of humor, and that's actually his name. Rumple skilled skin Wilson. The episode of the shit we've seen on the on this show that's actually plausible. We've learned that if you are going to commit crime, take your phone out of your pocket. Just just go ahead and do it or your ass will get you arrested. The asses are rising. The Justice League of America. I don't, don't say it. On the case. The more you say it, the worse it gets. Um, we've you can picture that movie. <laughs> we've learned that if you dump a little water on people, they lose their fucking mind. Yeah. 
Magic waterfall from sky. Everything go to hell. <laughs> See, I can even understand. I live in Charleston, and if it snows here at all, at all, not even if it sticks, if it snows here at all, every, we panic. We fucking close the schools and the stores, and we call in the National Guard. Oh, no, we don't do that. Like, when I, when I still worked in the mall, when I was still at Sephora, the day after Christmas, a couple years ago, there was an enormous blizzard. Ridiculous. Horrible blizzard. And like so bad, the governor shut down the roads and said only emergency personnel are allowed to be on the roads. Mall was open. I was working because you might have a life or death need to return a lip gloss that you got for Christmas. And I need to be there to take back that lip gloss and sell you a new lip gloss. And there were people shopping. There were people in making their fucking returns. And I'm like, this could wait for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And finally, we learned just because your motives are good, that doesn't excuse you from doing something really stupid. Do your good deeds sober. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't think. Yeah. Let, let the shit wear off before you decide if your plan is feasible or not, because. Yeah. Otherwise, this is how bad Hollywood comedy scripts begin. Yeah. And you're not Seth Rogen. Actually, it's probably a good thing, though. I, you probably that's one of those th those affirmation things. You wake up. It would have been a much bigger story if Seth Rogen donated a bunch of math to the typhoon relief. <laughs> that shit definitely would have made TMZ. One of those things you wake up in the morning, you look in the mirror and go, wow, at least I'm not Seth Rogen. And. Life Dude, looks Seth a little better. Rogan, Seth Rogen has a lot of money. Seth Rogen doesn't need to sell a nut to buy a Nissan. No, but he is Seth Rogen and he's got to live with that. But he has a lot of money and that makes it easier. Hmm. That's one to grow. So, yeah, that was the, the news for this. God damn it. Selling your testicle. For a car, for a fucking car of all the damn thing. For not even an awesome car. If you're going to sell your balls, sell them for something awesome. That car better be a fucking transformer. Then I'd be all about it. Like, oh, yeah, it's Nissan, but it turns into a goddamn robot. No, this one. Which one you want? Left or right? Let's do this. But this one doesn't turn into a robot. It just turns into a car that doesn't work eventually. Yeah. You get a car that stops working and you only have one testicle and yeah, real good investment there, Chuckles. Man, that's like the ultimate midlife crisis, isn't it? Like, damn, most dudes have a midlife crisis and they just buy a car. They don't like actively reject the, their their bait and tackle for no longer working properly and then buy a car. I'm officially old. I, I, you know how I know? Because I'm sitting there going, you know, if you're going to get your nut removed for a sum of money, go buy stock with it. I'm old. Ooh. I'm old. Oh, my God. That's I'm old. Well, I should probably get out of here so you can take your Metamucil.